Okay, so this is just a quick review for the USB GD-ROM controller. Now what this is, is it's a peripheral that replaces the GD-ROM disk drive, which goes inside the Dreamcast. Now, the benefits of this is it supports USB hard drives, USB pen drives, and I assume USB to SD adapters. Haven't tried it, but I assume it would work. Now, the file system, the file form, the file system format for these uh, disk drives and USB pens must be FAT32, and there's a max limit of two terabytes. So let's go on. The benefits of this is no discs, no discs, no disk swapping, nothing. You put all your images on a hard drive, plug it in. It brings up a nice little menu, minimalistic. Um, it does its job, allows you to select the GDI, .gdi file, which is a text file which lists the offsets and stuff like that, you don't need to know that. That's, you select that and it will load the game, simple as that. Now, where you get the games, entirely up to you, don't care, don't want to know. Um, you can rip your own games using the Dreamcast, look into that. Now, another great thing about this is, region free so got a us disc you want to rip it it works that's if you've got a pal, uh, PAL dreamcast or a japanese ntsc dreamcast you want to play an ntsc game stick it on the hard drive it works now the downside currently is no cdi image support uh, what these are is there's a different format uh, generally it's they're used for Dreamcast self-boot discs. Um, they're made so that you can stick a game or homebrew onto a CDR image uh, disc. Sorry. Currently, there's no support for those. Hopefully, that will be added. Um, the more people that buy this, I assume the quicker it will get added. Um, so that currently means no homebrew. So no Bleemcast, no emulators. Um, no third party menus or anything like that, stuff like that, you can't do anything like that just yet. Um, currently, it's just Dreamcast dumps only. Now, that's not a bad thing, that's a great thing. Um, any, anything works on it. Now, I had a few niggles when I first got it. Um, these were fixed with a firmware update. I contacted Nemo. Um, it's got a name in front of it, but I don't know how you pronounce the M. M Nemo. Uh, contacted him with the games that crashed, he replicated the crash and a couple of days after that I got a firmware that fixed it. Uh, I found another game that crashed, he's fixed that, so you know, top work to him. Um, everything seems to work on it, and it all games I've played work. Um, currently it region patches them, but currently it doesn't VGA patch them, so you have to do that manually, but there's most Dreamcast games support VGA, there's about 50 or so that don't, and what I mean by don't, I mean by they don't work at all. Um, if you VGA patch them, they still don't work, you just end up with a black screen. If you don't use a VGA cable, then you don't need to care. <laughs> Simple. Um, all the ones that can be patched work as well. So, um, now, this board you connect to this bit here which usually the GD-ROM assembly would sit on top and the controller board would be underneath. Um, I've taken them out because you can mount this, these screw holes here, fit for that over there, that thing there and then you plug it in and it just looks, it looks nicer, it looks cleaner. The only other thing is you have to cut a notch out the back of your Dreamcast on the lid on the top part of the case. Now, the great thing is, is Nemo gives us a template which you basically just acetate mines on. Um, it fits on these grooves. So basically, all you do is you push it against there and match this groove here. Acetate it on, draw a line with a pencil or pen, and then cut it out, file it out, and that fits perfectly. So I'll stop the video and. I'll show you it plugged in 
Oh, sorry, actually. Quick note. Um, this has got nothing to do with this board. Um, the other board that's out there as well that does similar stuff to this, but with SD cards instead of USB, the power supply gets hotter. Um, I assume that's due to the fact that there is no GD-ROM assembly or, you know, the whole thing's not there anymore, so there's a big gaping hole. And the way the Dreamcast was designed was to suck air through a tiny gap under here and a sim through here. Um, I fixed that by just basically putting this into the 5 volts, which is pin 2, and ground, which is pin 5. And then just putting a, a cheap fan from Poundland, you know, one of the USB coolers, uh, USB laptop coolers, just took the fan off it, added a fan header to the top, uh, onto the wire, and plug in. Case no longer gets hot, I can no longer, I don't get the, uh, I'll say the electrical smell, people will know what I mean by that, you no longer get that when you do that, so just add a wee fan in there, run the 5 volts, and this bugger's still noisy though, this one is noisier than that one, even though it's a cheap fan. So you'll know you you won't notice it's there. It's there. It's just it benefits this, and then run. Right. So I'll stop and I'll cut back to when it's installed. Okay. So here's it all installed. Fan connected. Fans cellar taped on with uh, electrical tape folded over itself. I've also got there's a, a spindle. See the wee foam pads you get in CDs, spindles, that just separate the disc from the lid, stops them flopping about in packaging. I've just hot glued one of them to the underside of the fan, and I've just basically sellotaped taped this on so I can lift this off if need be. Now, that's what it looks like connected. When you put the lid on, do this one handed, so, case goes on, that's what it looks like from the back. I can see the USB pops out. So I'll stop and I'll get back to this when it's all set up and plugged in, ready to go, and I'll show you on the television. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the uh, UGC menu and everything connected to the Dreamcast. So USB, uh, this is called a Hansel, in case you didn't know. Uh, this is just a VGA box with a built-in scan line generator. And this just converts VGA to HDMI. And I'd made this cable um, just so that it goes there. So it's tiny. Right, so turn this on, turn the flash off. Now this was a PAL Dreamcast, but uh, I just changed it to NTSC, the region, so that um, I get the orange swirl instead of the blue one. Um, because I also changed that to blue, but now I'm kind of wishing I kept the orange. But hey, I might put a white one in there. This is just a Christmas uh, LED from Poundland Christmas lights. Uh, they run off 3.3 like volts, no problem. Put them on 5, the blow. Right, but anyway, so here we've got this is what my hard drive looks like. Um, generally, what will happen is you'll have a recycle bin folder and a, was it a system information volume or something like that folder. Uh, I've just I created a wee batch file that just deletes them and unmounts the drive so that it's nice and clean. Anyway, so this is the folder structure. The way the device works is it reads whatever folders are on the drive. Simple. Um, so I've got mine's named, as you can see in front of me, and everything's organised. So if we go into S, you've got everything, everything. Now if you use the triggers, you can cycle down quick, so you can go up and down quick, 
Um, so let's launch Shenmue on. Now, <laughs> asked the div asked Nemo if he could add a add an option to auto launch a .dot gdi file. So, for instance, disk one. When you select it, you get a list of the files. Now, the only file that's really useful here is the .dot gdi file. These bin and raw files are useless for launching. So if you select one of them, you'll just get it'll just reload the Dreamcast and you'll end up in the audio player with garbled sound. So I asked them if you could add basically, you know, support so that if you're on a folder, for instance, you just press A on it and it launches instead of going down a folder. He said no just yet, basically needs more of us to buy it for it to be worthwhile kind of updating this but anyway so press A Dreamcast reboots reloads and now we've got the game loading now this supports CDDA audio um, I think that stands for CD data audio or something, I don't know what the hell it stands for, audio. Um, a lot of the rips you get, like the CDI files don't have that audio, but, uh, ah, you just pick yes. So as you can see, Shenmue, Shenmue, if you want to hear, um, is playing perfectly fine. There's no issues with it, and it looks brilliant through VGA or through VGA to HDMI. Um, so turn it off, back on. Now I'll disconnect the hard drive, and this is what happens. Now I'm just showing this because if you ever get if you you're ever uh, stuck, you know your Dreamcast keeps doing this. It's because the USB device hasn't been recognised. So if you plug it back in, right. So it's plugged back in. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Now, about ninety-five percent of the time, I'll read the I'll read the drive okay, and you'll get this screen. But occasionally, it uh, won't, and it'll just freeze, and you need to turn it on and off again. I've only had this issue with USB three hard drives or enclosures, uh, the USB two point oh version enclosures seem to work every single time. Um, so. I don't know what to make of that. Anyway, so let's try another game. Um, when this, when I first got this, I had some issues with 101 Dalmatians. Um, spoke to Nemo, and he fixed that within a couple of days. And I got a new firmware, and it works. So as you'll see, it used to be if you tried to skip the intro videos, it would some 90, what about 75% of the time the other times it would just crash like that video there now it loads to the menu focus that game works this is what I was saying the disk the drive hasn't been read, so you can either do two things. Pull the USB out a bit until it disconnects the drive and then plug it back in. And it'll just continue to load. Or it won't. <laughs> okay, turn it on and off. Usually if it freezes like that you can just disconnect the hard drive and plug it back in again and it'll load again. 
right so uh, I will try go over get any power games should have um, Uh, I don't think I mentioned it doesn't support swapping discs currently. So if you like, for instance, D two, I think it's the only game that requires you to open the lid and stick the disc in as soon as it asks for it. Um, Resident Evil two, uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica and stuff like that saved the game. Uh, just like Shenmue saves the game, and then you turn it off, put the disc two in, and then you load your save, and it carries on. They all work perfectly fine. It just you can't currently switch disc. Um, I assume that will be getting that should be getting added at some point. Um, might require some soldering though. I'm not entirely sure how we work that one out. Um, on the device, there's a part, there's a section for soldering on the lid trigger. You know the wee. I just say the wee switch essentially. I'm trying to think of any. God, uh, blah blah blah. I don't know. Let's. Oh crap! So, Code Veronica. The good thing is everything works. Um, any games I come across that crash, it's generally the only time I've had anything crash is when it comes to a video. Like an intro, if you try and skip an intro, it crashes. Um, but Nemo fixes it, so it's no big deal. I've not had a game actually crash while I was playing a game. And it's great to have super fast loading times. And no, <laughs> you know, bloody drive going like clappers. So, aye, that's basically it. That's the USB GD ROM controller. Uh, brilliant device. As love the Dreamcast, brilliant console, and thanks Nemo for the device, and thanks for letting me purchase it, be one of the first eight or so to get it. So anyway, hopefully there's a bit of information on it. Um, I'm no the great. I, this is really the first time I've ever done a kind of review, so to speak. Um, this has been recorded by an iPhone, so I don't have any fancy equipment, and as you can see, I've got my lovely rug. Oh, sorry, carpet, which the landlord put in. So, <laughs> anyway, so, well, hopefully you found it informative and you purchase one. Um, oh, the price is like, I paid £137 or something like that. That was including delivery and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, it's well worth it, to be perfectly honest. I'd, I'd have paid more for it, um, especially for a device that basically means I can use my Dreamcast until at least the PSU dies or the motherboard dies. I'm no now reliant on the GD-ROM drive anymore, so again, thanks Nemo for that. Anyway, I'm going to go, so right, cheerio, bye.